Hey, this is Steve Sherman again, Creative Power Process, powerprocesstips.com. I'm back with my series on view cameras and view camera movements. What I specifically want to talk about in this segment is at the actual image circle of a lens and the Kona light that it projects. I have a little homemade uh, illustration here that I hope is going to project uh, and illustrate what I'm trying to talk about. Now, we have the camera over here where the front lens standard is zeroed out. I've talked about why I'm going to illustrate now why it's much more advantageous to use the rear standard than it is the front standard. When I take this lens and I dramatically tip it this way, tilt it this way, what happens when the camera shutter trips? You get a cone of light that projects from the back of the, uh, the lens and it covers the film. When you tip the lens dramatically like this, what ends up happening is that cone of light dramatically changes the angle and what happens, you usually cut off um, parts of the film, you have vignetted, you get less density there and it shows up in dark corners. Now it's interesting to note that the more expensive the glass, the better the coverage is. So you can see that as the image circle grows, but that's just simply a function of how expensive the lens is or how cheap it is, how much light it will throw. So what you see here is when you have the lens dramatically tipped forward to try to change your plane of focus and, and pick up um, additional near and far relationships, you're going to actually see a vignetting where the lens doesn't cover as well. If you have dark corners in your sky, this is usually the reason why. So I'm going to return the lens standard to so that it's completely upright just as it is with a 35 millimeter camera. Now, now the lens is, covers the piece of film just fine. Everything is going to be illuminated properly and you're going to get a nice clean negative edge to edge to edge. I can accomplish the same thing by moving the rear standard back in the opposite direction and what happens is look at the try to follow the black outline of the film it's actually technically going to get slightly smaller so the benefit is you're not only going to use the sweet spot of the lens but you're not going to run anywhere near the risk of vignetting anything because actually the image circle that the lens projects is slightly larger when the film is oriented this way this that's the same as saying when the back is oriented this way so I want to review this segment that we've done on view cameras and tilts and swings. I want to again reiterate, when you use the front lens standard to make depth of focus corrections by tipping the lens this way, you're going to use up a tremendous amount of your image circle. You're going to do two things. You're more than likely you're going to vignette the image and you're going to get a density loss on the corners. That's not something that you want. So we're going to return that lens standard to its upright position and we're going to use the back in the exact opposite direction. That accomplishes the identical uh, depth of uh, field um, correction. What ends up happening when you turn, when you tip the back like this, you're actually using a slightly smaller area of the image circle. You're using the sweet spot. You're not going to vignette. So these are benefits of using the rear standard as opposed to the front standard. They accomplish the identical same, same thing. Now what we're going to do in the next segment is I'm going to actually go on location. We're going to put this view camera into a practical application. And for, you that, for those of you that think you can't use the rear standard to photograph buildings, I'm going to show you how. Steve Sherman, Power Process, powerprocesstips.com.